Okay, I'm going to make a short little video here on this uh, this wheel right here. I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, I, I hope this helps somebody. I'm really doing this uh, because it answers a question that I had years ago. And unfortunately, it doesn't apply to me right now. Uh, but I thought I'd make this video and possibly help some people out. This is a Space Saver wheel and tire from my mother's uh, 2008 Ford Ranger. And the reason I have it out is because I was going to check the tire pressure. Of course, the valve stem is on this side. And the previous owner of this truck, I guess, had a flat tire and they dropped this down. Well, when they put it back in, the valve stem was pointing up towards the bed. So I had to drop the whole wheel and tire assembly uh, to get it down to check the air pressure, which was way low. It was about 15 PSI. Uh, so anyway, I dropped this out. Anyway, years ago, I was building a, uh, a hot rod, kind of a rat rod kind of thing, and I bought some, uh, some narrow vintage uh, bias ply white walls. And I was looking for some modern narrow steel wheels to use with my tires, and I just couldn't find any. And I ended up uh, selling the project, and the tires went with it, and, and all this, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, this is a 16-inch diameter steel wheel. It's a Ford steel wheel. Like I said, it's a two th this came out of a 2008 Ford Ranger. It's not for sale. I'm just demonstrating it. And so I thought I would uh, give everybody the measurements of everything in case they're looking for some 16-inch uh, narrow steel wheels to go with their 16-inch uh, vintage tires. So uh, let me get started here. The bolt pattern, and of course bolt pattern on a five lug is measured from the edge of one of the lug holes to the center of the other. And this is a four on five and a, um, I, I'm sorry, a five on four and a half inch bolt circle. So very common. Uh, also, the inside hub diameter, that's this area right here, the inside diameter of this hole that fits over the hub, either the rotor or the drum, the front hub, this inside diameter I measured out to 2.78 inches inside diameter. Also, the cross section of the wheel, and that is uh, the width of the wheel, and that's from, you know, obviously the tire's mounted, so I measured from the outside of the flange here to the uh, opposite side outer flange. And this wheel is about an eighth inch thick, so uh, I subtracted a quarter inch from my measurement. I got a four and a half inch wide that's inside of the flange to the inside of the opposite flange, four and a half inches wide. And lastly, the back spacing. Backspacing is really easy to do. Oops. Of course, you just take your straight edge, lay it across your, your wheel. Of course, obviously there is a gap there between the tire and the wheel. I measured that out at 3 eighths of an inch. So subtracting that 3 eighths of an inch, I got a backspacing of 3, three and 1 eighth inch backspacing. So, uh, like I said, if somebody's building a vintage hot rod or a rat rod or anything like that and you need a skinny steel wheel to go with your skinny vintage tires, especially a modern wheel, the run out on these uh, is much less than, than old wheels. I mean, I think older steel wheels, an eighth of an inch is considered acceptable amount of run out. Uh, these are usually uh, quite a bit better than that. Uh, they're at least half that, so they're a sixteenth of an inch run out. So, uh, so like I said, sixteen inch steel wheel. If you're if you're looking for one for your vintage hot rod, uh, check out these Ford Ranger uh, Space Saver spares. See if you can uh, dig one of these up on Craigslist or uh, out of the junkyard or something like that. So, uh, anyway, just uh, thought I'd post this video and uh, hopes hope it uh, helps some people out. Thanks for watching.